If you're a seasoned PC builder or tinkerer, you can probably rattle off a few different connectors and headers on your motherboard in your freaking sleep, especially if you dream about RGB heat sinks like I do. But what about all those other little tiny components? For instance, the capacitors and resistors that fill up all the extra space. What exactly do they do? Well, a big part of the reason you have so many electronic components on your motherboard's PCB is that your computer parts like CPU, graphics card, memory, etc. typically can't use electricity directly from your power supply. For example, most of those 650 watts or whatever your power supply promises are delivered on the 12 volt rail. But imagine what would happen if you put 12 volts through a modern CPU, which only needs like a tenth of that to run. You'd fry it faster than an egg on a hot radio uh, sidewalk. So because everything in your PC needs a very specific amount of power, your board has lots of capacitors on it. Those are the cylindrical looking things that poke out of your motherboard like little tiny water towers in a little miniature city. Uh, they even serve a somewhat similar function to the aforementioned water towers. They store energy, then release it in a controlled fashion. You see, the power that comes into them doesn't flow completely smoothly and has small variances in voltage that could make it useless or even damage your components. So these small capacitors clean up the power and deliver the silky smooth constant voltage that your internal electronics need. And if you open up a decent power supply, make sure it's unplugged first. You'll probably find some much larger capacitors that serve a similar function, keeping a constant DC voltage for your computer and filtering out noisy AC interference, also called ripple. But although capacitors help to clean up the power, resistors do much of the heavy lifting when it comes to controlling what voltages your components actually get. As you can probably guess, a resistor resists the flow of current, ensuring that your components won't get so much power that they'll be damaged. Although many hobbyists who have worked with simple circuits might be familiar with resistors that look like this, with colored bands that indicate strength measured in ohms, most resistors on modern motherboards are more understated in appearance, looking like little black and silver rectangles. Okay then, but what about all those blocky things near my CPU? They don't look like capacitors or resistors, and okay, well, you'd be right. These are called chokes, which, and okay, don't get too excited. They're a type of inductor, similar to how a capacitor will smooth out voltage, an inductor will smooth out current. Important, considering how much power a typical desktop CPU can draw. You can learn more about CPU power delivery right up here. And speaking of power delivery, we would be remiss if we didn't mention our old friend, the transistor. You might know that there are millions or even billions of tiny transistors in your CPU and chipset that act as logic switches that allow your computer to function. But there are larger ones on your motherboard, close to the chokes that I mentioned earlier, called MOSFETs. Since transistors can both change voltages and have logic gates, your MOSFETs and CPU actually talk with each other to figure out the correct amount of voltage to deliver to the CPU at any given time. Then the MOSFETs take the electricity from your power supply, adjust the voltage, and pass it through the chokes and onto your processor. So obviously, the engineering that goes into making all of these parts work together properly is quite complex. But hopefully, now you have a better idea of why all those random bits on your motherboard are even there. And if not, you could always just buy one of those newfangled boards with the nice looking shroud and RGB lights and forget everything that I just said. It's not like you'll hurt John's feelings or anything. You will a lot, actually, but it's okay. Squarespace is the simple, powerful, and beautiful way to make a website today. And they have 24-7 live chat and email support. It's only 12 bucks a month, and if you sign up for a year, you get a free domain. Squarespace has responsive design so that your website looks great on any device that you view it on. They have commerce modules so you can sell things through your website, and they even have a cover page function. It's a feature that allows you to set up a beautiful one-page online presence in just minutes.
They also have new HTTP2 support for faster speeds on all Squarespace websites. You can start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. When you decide to do that, go to Squarespace and enter offer code TECHQUICKIE to get 10% off your first purchase. All right, guys, if you liked that video, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. Get subscribed. Comment down below on other things that we should cover on TechWiki. And before you go, actually, I'll, I'll help you leave. Just click on this thing, wherever it happens to be. It's the 7350K review over on Linus Tech Tips. Bye.